everybody. We are on top of the mountain and we're going to go foraging and we want to show you guys some things that we just found. But first I want to show you what you should always bring with you when you go foraging in the woods because you're going to need it. So let's uh, let's do it. I'll flip the camera around and show you. I can't. <laughs> okay, so first I want to show you where we are because it's so pretty up here. We are on top of a mountain and we are surrounded by mountains. It's kind of woodsy. But, yeah. And this is seven. Hey. All right, so what you need to bring on every foraging trip is some kind of bag. You see I have my backpack with lots of pockets for water and stuff like that. And paper then, bags preferably. Yeah, and then you want to bring paper bags to put your stuff in. And the reason you use paper is because a lot of times things hold moisture. And if you put a bunch of moist, wet things in a plastic bag, they're going to get gooky and slimy by the time you get back to the house. So paper kind of absorbs the moisture. And then you always want to bring a pen to write down on the bag any notes that you um, can think of, like what type of tree it, this, whatever you find is near, or just any kind of pointers that you think might help. Um, and then you want to have a good knife. And this is a very sharp knife, and it has a brush on the end. It's actually a mushroom knife. But it's good to have that for all types of foraging <laughs> because you don't want to put dirty stuff in a bag with a bunch of other stuff or you're going to have to clean everything. So if you can get as much dirt as you can off of each thing that you find, it's always good to do that. So, all right, let's go see what we can find. Oh, that's American cancer root. Really? Also called squaw root. Yes. Let's see if you guys can see this. This is actually edible, and the Native Americans use it for metapause, metapause symptoms, and I think you can use it for um, your blood too. Can you I might want to research that up. Yeah, grab a piece off and eat it, Seven. Tell us what it tastes like. Does it have any flavor? Does it taste like corn? <laughs> Is it bad? Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> well, I know it's medicinal. <coughs> Why did you even taste that? And it usually grows off of the roots of oak trees. So there must be... I guess this is an oak tree. It looks like an oak tree. So there must be roots right there. Is there any more around here? Oh gosh, it's everywhere. Yeah, I saw that. Look at that. Can you go all over here? And back There's there, some too. more. Where is it? Oh, wait, hold up. I think the white thing is the flowers, Mom. Well, then it's in. Mom. The white thing is the mucky flowers because there's a bee on one of them. And it looks like There's probably some pollen in there. Yeah. It would make sense. See, there's some more. So, a lot of people use this. Well, Native Americans use it for for menopause symptoms, and um, I think it's it thins your blood or thickens your blood. I can't really remember, so just do some research. All right, let's go see what else we can find. So we've decided to take some American cancer root and make some tea. So Seven's gonna get a few pieces and throw it in there. This stuff's been used by the Native Americans for a really long time. And it's neat living in the area. Let's see. Oh, there's a whole bunch. I'm only going get, to get the ones with the white flowers on them. Okay. Let's see what you got so far. Oh, nice. You got a good amount, Seven. This is Seven's specialty. She just found a big chunk of lighter. And the lighter queen. A whole tree. She found a whole tree right up there. Look at how See pretty it laying on the ground, is. but that's a lighter tree. It smells like Gatorade, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So, what are you going to do with it? Burn it. <laughs> sniff it. Because <laughs> it smells amazing. Alright. Okay. 
Let's move on. So I want to show you guys something. It's a little baby, but when it grows big, you can eat it. It's a mushroom. It's called Dryad Saddle. It's really small. But you, you get the idea of what it's going to look like. And the reason I know it's Dryad Saddle is because the underneath it's got little spores on it. It doesn't have gills. It's like spongy. I hope you can see it. You may not be able to. But anyways, when it gets bigger, you can cut it off and chop it up into little pieces and saute it in butter, and it's really good. It's one of my favorite mushrooms. A lot of people don't like it, but I like it. Um, there's another name for it. Um, um, I can't remember. Anyways, I'll let you know later. Moving on. So we've been up here for about 20 minutes, but I don't think enough has grown up here yet. So we're going to head down to a really lush spot that we found the other day. And I actually found some more L mushrooms the other day, so let's go see if we can find some more. So this is the difference in the land. <laughs> Sorry. What are we, 2,000 feet lower in elevation? Yeah, I think we were about 2,000 feet up when you guys started watching the video. And now we're down lower. It's warmer. Everything's green. And we're going to go try to find some stuff to show you guys. So hang tight. So what did you find, Seven? Oh. Show me what you found. But it's not soft ground, so hang on. So, Seven finds these wild onions. There's some right there. Let's see. Let's show the people. Let's just show them what they look like. And you pull them up, usually, and there's an onion in there. And they're, they're really good to eat. You can eat it just like this if you get all the dirt off of it. You show them how you eat it. And she actually takes the onion part off. And then she pickles them. Right now we have a jar of little baby onions in the refrigerator. And you can all also dry this up. And it smells amazing. Oh yeah, you can dry the the onion. What is that called? The top of the onion. You can dry it, dehydrate the it. part. And then crunch it up and use it as flavor on foods and then soups and stuff. We've been doing that. And you see her eating the onion. <laughs> How is it? <coughs> that one's strong. <laughs> But these wild onions, um, people use them to reduce cholesterol levels. And you can tell the difference between them and normal glass. They're always a little darker, and they're not all this big, but the inside of them is, like, hollow. Mm-hmm. Like... Like a scallion. Yeah, like a scallion. And this tastes like onion, too. Let me see the inside. It. Here, I'll see the inside of the plant. Should hold the plant still for me. Can you see it? No, really. Well, but when you pull it up... It smells and tastes like onions. You, you'll just know. Yeah, true. But if you see these, you might have yourself an onion. They taste pretty good, so if you're ever hungry in the woods, just pull you up some wild onions and chow down. And you can, uh, <laughs> and you can dry these up and grind them up in a mortar and pestle, I think, yeah? Yeah, mortar pestle. And, um, we put it in a little container. Mm -hmm. We put it on all of our food now, and it smells and tastes good. It's amazing. really good. It's I a very good seasoning. Me it's neither. Really sweet. It made the house smell good, too, when we were making it. Yeah, it's way sweeter than it tastes. So yeah. yeah. All right. So we came down to our morel spot. Well, we didn't find any morels. I really wanted to show you guys, but uh, I'll have to show you some at a later date. Dude, but I found something else I want to show you, but it's way over here, so I'm going to put you on pause. So this is something that's in my yard, and I posted about it the other day on my Let's Eat Wild Edibles Facebook page. It's called the Annual Flea Bane, and you can actually eat the leaves. You can put them in salad, and so you can take the leaves off and use it for different types of things. You can eat it. I can put it in a salad. It tastes, doesn't taste too bad. A lot of natural things aren't. Okay, so I kept running out of storage space, so I cleaned it up a little, and here we go again. So the medicinal benefits of this little plant are for um, 
that's an antioxidant and people use it for the neurological system for something. You probably need to do some research. Everything I tell you, make sure you research. But I also want to show you some other stuff. This is actually on my Facebook page. We made some blue violet jelly and this is the blue violet. And people use blue violets with their kids. You can eat the whole flower and the leaves in a salad and it's actually an anti-inflammatory and you can eat it for a sore throat or make tea with it and it's good for the upper respiratory system. And over here I saw a little baby strawberry I wanted to show you. It's so cute, little. Here it is. Let's see if you can see it. See the little strawberry? These are wild strawberries. You can eat these too. They're a little sweeter than regular strawberries, but they don't get as big. And then over here we have it's called purple dead nettle. This is a good little plant. This is an anti-inflammatory. You can eat it raw, the whole flower and the leaves. You can put it in salads or you can brew it, and make tea. Um, but look up the medicinal benefits of this. It's called purple dead nettle. It's a good plant. Can't remember exactly what it did. I think it was, uh, I think it was an, an an antioxidant and anti-inflammatory, but just Google purple dead nettle medicinal benefits and you will be amazed by this little plant. Oh, but don't eat a lot of these because they've been um, used for laxative. So if you need a laxative, here's your purple dead nettle. What is going on over here? What? What is all this? Seven, what is this? What? What did you find? So Seven is in the creek, and she thinks she's found marble? Oh, pretty. It's prettier up there. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Any creatures? No, I think I found a crawdad. I'm trying to dig them out right now. <laughs> okay. All right, well, I think we've shown you pretty much everything we need to show you. So... <laughs> Happy foraging!